We have a solar storm that's hitting Earth now, but it's much slower than expected. But it might actually get a boost for some fast wind that's on its way to Earth now. And who knows, it might actually bring us some aurora. Those stories are more in the news this week. The sun has been pretty active this week. It's actually been firing off a few solar storms, including a big filament eruption that became Earth-directed. Now, we've been waiting for this solar storm to hit Earth, but it's been moving quite slowly. And if you've been following the United States presidential election, you might have actually missed it. But it now is impacting Earth, but it's awfully slow. The neat thing is that we've got this coronal hole here that's sending some fast wind hot on its tail. So it might actually speed things up, push the wind to be fast enough to actually cause some storming, and we might actually get some aurora over the next few days. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we are well below the seafloor right now, and it's very quiet. We hardly have any flares at all, let alone C-class flares, so you GPS operators are probably loving life. But you amateur radio operators, we hardly have enough solar flux to even support uh, radio propagation. So we're getting to those marginal levels, and it's going to continue like this as we get closer to solar minimum. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see at the end of October, we did have that extended period of storming. That was due to some fast wind that gave us aurora pretty much all over the world. But since then, things have died down and gotten quieter and quieter, and that's pretty much where we are right now. Now, we've got that new solar storm that's hitting Earth right now, but it's still moving very, very slowly, so it's not causing much storming. But when that fast wind boosts the speed up, we might actually rise back up to storm levels, and you amateur radio operators expect that your uh, propagation is probably going to diminish or you're going to have issues uh, starting maybe around the 10th or so. And then things will kind of be scattered for the next few days after that. And that big storm that happened at the end of October and in through Halloween, that caused aurora all over the world in places like Poland and in Scotland and also North Yorkshire in the UK. Now moving across the pond, we had a gorgeous aurora in the Yukon, and also in Whistler, and in Calgary. And in the United States, we had gorgeous aurora in New Hampshire. It reached Cheyenne, Wyoming. Also, we had some in Bend, Oregon. And a lucky traveler even watched the aurora as he flew from Florida back to the UK. Now in the southern part of the world, we had gorgeous aurora in Queenstown, New Zealand. It made it to Hobart, Tasmania, and believe it or not, all the way up to Perth, Australia. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see is a few active regions on the sun, but not too much. We've got a small uh, coronal hole that's going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days. That could bring us maybe a little chance of storming in the next week or so. But the big story is this massive coronal hole. See all that black? That's the hole that caused the huge storming over Halloween. You can see it's still really well formed, and that thing will be rotating back into Earth view, going to cause more problems for us again in about two weeks. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2605 is now rotated off of the west limb. 2606 is pretty much faded into nothing. And we have a new region that's rotating into Earth view right now, but it looks pretty quiet too. Hopefully this will help keep the solar flux up a bit, because we have absolutely no chance for any large class flares. And now it's just a matter of keeping the flux high enough so you amateur radio operators can enjoy some propagation. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of this solar storm that's hitting Earth right now, but it's not having a very strong impact because it's such a slow-moving storm. Now, we're expecting that fast wind to come in behind it and start speeding things up here in the next couple days. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with about a 20% chance of a minor storm. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with only about a 5% chance of a minor storm. So you aurora chasers, you may not have nearly as big a chance to see aurora, especially in the upper tier of the United States, than we had hoped. But you amateur radio operators are probably cheering right now because this means propagation won't be affected nearly as badly as we might have thought. Now these conditions should probably continue through through weekend until this fast wind moves out of the Earth strike zone and then things will begin to settle down.
Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, pretty much everything is in the green. We really don't have much activity going on in terms of flares right now, so your GPS operators are probably loving life, and you amateur radio operators, at least in terms of flares, there's absolutely no threat for any radio blackouts. However, with this low activity comes a low solar flux, so we're having a, this in the yellow because it barely is enough to support amateur radio propagation right now, and this kind of trend will continue continue over the next week. So the space weather this week is really keeping us on our toes. We are getting hit by a solar storm right now, but it's slower than anticipated, so the activity levels are staying quite low. And that's good news for you GPS operators and you amateur radio operators who kind of want to keep things quiet so you can enjoy good signal propagation. As far as you aurora photographers are concerned, just be a little patient, because once that fast wind hits, it may kick things back up and maybe even bring us up to storm levels so you can get a good aurora shot or two. But that may not happen happen until we get a little bit closer to the weekend. I'm Tama the Scove. Thank you for watching.